welcome to this session in the speaking module of the second course in English. In this session today, we are going to look at the concept of rhythm, what it means when we say that we should have the proper rhythm, proper stress, proper intonation, proper sounds. So, you know, after we have learnt to produce proper sounds of any language, after we have learned to produce these sounds in a sequence and stress one of these sounds, pause after certain unit of speech, and then we should also pay attention now, then we should also pay attention to the rhythm of the speech, you know. Each language, go to the next, each language, all languages of the world have their own unique rhythm. They are spoken in a very particular manner, listening to which you can say that this person speaks this language or the speaker of this language, the one before me now, comes from this part of the community, this class of the community. So, you know, like each class, each community, each region speaking a language has its own unique features, they also have a unique rhythm. And there is this rhythm of the standard English, you know. What do we mean by rhythm? What is rhythm? You know, we see it best when we hear a new language. When we hear a new language, it's not their sounds, it's not their words and meanings, it is their rhythm that we notice first, that we hear immediately and we realize, oh, it's a new sound for us, it's a new language for us. So, you know, what is rhythm? But, you know, rhythm is integral to all languages and we see them, we see rhythm much more clearly when we listen to a song, when we sing a song, when we do some bhajana, kirtana, you know, or when we see a dance, or when we dance, you know, just as songs have a rhythm, so dances also have a rhythm. They may be slow, they may be fast, they may be steady. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what is rhythm? Okay. Uh, I am going to show you a very brief video of rhythm in dance. Okay. It is a wonderful piece of dance. They are giving lesson to beginners about how we should begin. But may I advise you to pay greater attention to the steps that are taken. Okay. Rather than to other parts of the movement there. Just look at the steps and that will help you better understand the concept of rhythm. Please pay attention to the footwork and see how the pattern repeats itself, you know. Anything, you know, in, 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 a, in a certain number of times and repeat it in a certain manner, that creates rhythm. Please pay attention to the footwork. Yeah. Just as it is with sounds, you have long and short sounds, stressed and unstressed sounds coming after one another in a certain pattern. Two unstressed plus one stressed or one stressed followed by two stressed sounds or two lo one long sound followed by two short sounds, you know. Just as in the dance here, you know, two beats of left step, one of right or one left, one right and then one heel, you know. And then first forward, then backward, and right, then left, then cutting across diagonally. These are the basic units of dance, and their combination 
and repeating these combinations give you the art form called dance. Look at it once again. You know the dance is nothing but a combination of footfalls from backward, forward, right, left, cutting across, diagonal, you know so many steps of right, so many steps of left in a certain time. Watch it once and you will get the concept of rhythm so easily. Yeah. So just as it is here with footwork, you know, a, a few beats from left, a few from the right, going backward or forward, or you know, sometimes half steps only, you know, beat with the heel. Similarly, it's, it's a similar thing with sounds, you know, you have long sounds followed by short sounds or some short sounds followed by long sounds and you know their combination in a time unit, their patterns and patterns repeating themselves as many lines, as many syllables in the first line as in the second, as in the left, so in right. These things make the rhythm and give the language their melody. Let's go forward. Next. So what is rhythm? Actually, rhythm is just another name for the repeated patterns of sounds arranged in syllables, arranged in a unit of, you know, uh, sorry, uh, re repeated patterns of sounds arranged in a time unit. Suppose you have five syllables or four syllables or six syllables, you know, then one or two of them is stressed, one or two of them is unstressed. You have five or six sounds, so one or two of them is long one or two of them is short and you know they repeat themselves within the given time. That is why you get a regular steady rhythm and you sing and you remember songs, okay. From very few limited elements making permutations and combinations give us the huge oceanic art of and one of the best arts of music and dance, okay. So, you know, rhythm is nothing but patterns of speech repeating themselves in a time unit, okay. In a certain pause group, for example, you know, you can say uh, they, they have, it, it has a certain number of sounds or certain number of syllables, some are stressed, others are unstressed and they repeat themselves. So, this arrangement of syllables in, in a unit of speech this arrangement of sounds in a unit of speech is known as rhythm and when we learn another language, when we learn to speak in another language, we should learn their sounds, we should learn stresses, we should learn intonation, we should also learn the rhythm of the language. Otherwise you will sound monotonous, people might misunderstand us and you know, it is more like machine generated speech, they do not have much of a rhythm, okay. So that is why it is important for us to learn rhythm. How do we learn it? Next, it is pretty simple, you know, learning uh, 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 to speak in rhythm is not very difficult, you know. If you listen to some poems, some, though you know, Ordinary, ordinary daily conversation also has a rhythm. None of us speaks all the sounds at the same length, same pitch, same vibration, same sort of rhythm, you know. There is variation even there, but this variation is not as dramatic as it becomes when we sing, when we dance when we do it with music, with beats from drum or guitar or any other wind or wire, wind or string or you know a percussion instrument, then you know those beats come to us very clearly, we notice them better. But it is not the case that ordinary daily conversation does not have a rhythm, a melody, you know. All of us speak in, in, in a, you know, high rise, low, you know, in a rise-fall, rise-fall manner. Otherwise, 
we would sound monotonous. So for example, you know, I am going to uh, first show you this poem and then you know, uh, also going to play its audio recording. So you know, while listening to it, of course look at the text, get the text right, but then in some part also pay attention to the arrangement of sounds to the rhythm. Let us look at the poem. Which poem? You know, let me deviate, digress from the topic today. You know, the topic today is rhythm, but allow me to talk about this poem and this poet for a moment. This poem called A Psalm of Life is actually a different kind of psalm of life. You know, psalms, psalms are a sort of verse that were made popular, that were made, that was made popular by the Holy Bible. You know, most psalms tell the devotees, tell us that, you know, God alone matters. Life is unreal. We are all creatures of dust. We are all creatures of clay. And, you know, we will go back to the clay. You know, there is a uh, you know, biblical saying, dust thou art, unto dust thou returnest, okay? which is true. No matter who, no matter how strong, all of us one day die. There is no, no exception to it at all. Anyone who is born is bound to die. It is inevitable. You know? It does happen. Yeah, and it, it is not just English, you know, similar sayings are there in all natural languages, whether they are, they are, they have or they do not have great literature, be it Chinese, be it Sanskrit, be it Greek, Latin, Hindi, Tamil, French, all languages have this saying because it is a universal truth. Does that therefore mean we should do nothing because we are going to die? Does that therefore mean we should wait for death with folded hands and do nothing? Does that therefore mean that we should live sad, unhappy, you know, waiting for death, not knowing when it comes? Or we can take charge of life, live it as it ought to be lived, enjoy it and do something, something in the limited time that we have got, something such that would make others happy, would leave an example, would inspire others. So, you know, this poem, A Psalm of Life, was composed, as the slide here tells you, in 1838 by a professor called Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow was a professor at Harvard, but you know, he gave up his job after some time to concentrate on writing, and he has been one of the most popular American poets and I would say one of the most popular English poets. You know, some of his songs, some of his poems are so inspiring. You should listen to their audio recording, you should read those poems and they will not only teach you language, they will not only help you learn English better, they will teach you a lesson or two for life so that when you are in distress, when critical moments come in your life, you will find courage and strength from these poems to stand up and move on. Okay? Let us listen to the poem first. What the heart of the young man said to the psalmist, Tell me not, in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is a destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow find his farther than today. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, thou stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb-driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. 
Trust no future, however pleasant. Let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present. Heart within and God overhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing over life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still persuading, learn to labor and to wait. Maybe it was a little too rapid. You might not have noticed all the features of this poem, but you know, you can do that again and again, you know. Look at the text, look at the, listen to the poem, listen to the poem and look at the text again. You can do it as many times as you like until you are sure you understand the words and you understand the music of the poem. And then, you know, you will see very clearly as we are also going to demonstrate that, you know, this is the rhythm of the poem, okay? There may be a few, you know, unusual new words for you in the poem. Uh, you know, if they are new for you, please don't hesitate. Look up the dictionary for their meaning, their pronunciation, their usage. You know, whenever you go to a dictionary, don't leave the dictionary only by looking at one or two little things. A dictionary gives you all the necessary information about any word. It tells you how this word is spelt. It tells you how this word is pronounced, what it means, how it will look like or sound like when it goes into past or present tense or in plural or singular number or in comparative or superlative degree, okay? And how it's used in a sentence. So whenever you look up a word in a dictionary, you know, don't, wa don't waste that chance. Look up all the other related information so that, you know, you don't need to look at it again and you remember it for the rest of your life. So please, if there are any words here which are new for you, look up a dictionary and learn it. But listen to the poem, look at the poem as many times as you like until you are sure you got enough of it. Now we will go into the analysis of, into the analysis and understanding of the rhythm of the poem. Let's understand the rhythm of the poem. Come next. So no, first thing, you know, as I told you, sounds are organized in syllables, okay? Say for example, uh, you know, my favorite example is uh, naming those domestic animals cat. Three sounds, k, at, uh, but one syllable. Monkeys, you know, two syllables, mon, ki. Five sounds, ma, a, uh, n, in the first syllable, k, and e, in the next syllable. So, mon makes one syllable, ki makes the next syllable. If you have a word like elephant, you know, then you have three syllables, a, li, Fant. We have already spoken about these things. And you know, first syllable has only one sound, a. Second syllable has two sounds, l and e. So you have a li. And then third syllable has four sounds, f, a, n, t. So you have elephant. You know? So number of sounds may differ, but the number of vowels in each syllable is fixed. It is only one. So you see three vowels. E, E, A gives you a trisyllabic word, A, Li, Fant. So, you know, once again, look at the line and count the number of words and you will find a regular pattern. Say in the first line, you know, tell me not in mournful numbers, you know, you have eight syllables, tell me not, three, in mournful, tell me not, three, in mournful, 3, 3, 3 plus 6 and 2 numbers, so 8 syllables. But in the next line, you have only 7. The life is but 3, an empty 5, dream. Life is but 3, an empty 3. Empty has 2 syllables, M, T. So 6 plus dream, 7. Like that, you know, it alternates 8 syllables, 7 syllables, 8 syllables, 7 syllables and 
rhymes, you know. So first line rhymes with third, second line rhymes with fourth, you see, in mournful numbers, but second line has dream. Then third line has slumbers, but fourth line has seem. The last syllable in all the line, in alternating lines, you know, rhyme with each other, by which I mean they have similar sounds, okay. So all these things go to make the rhythm and you know, this is not typical only of English, this is typical of all languages and this happens not just in poems, this happens even in prose, even in ordinary daily conversation, okay. There are other things to rhythm, you know, so easy, I am sure you understand it. You can do the remaining syllables yourself and just count the number of syllables in different stanzas and I am quite confident you will have no difficulty. But if you have any difficulty, please check with us, okay. Next. Then there are beats, you know. Some syllables are pronounced. Some syllables are, you know, have, have you know, are very prominent and, you know, there is a pause within the line. So, for example, the the line, life is real, life is earnest. It does not go like that without pause. Life is real, life is earnest. No, it goes with a pause. It says, life is real, you know. It is not that we are all dust and only going to dust. In between we also live. So, it says, life is real, there is a pause. And then, life is earnest, you know. You live with a passion, you know, you enjoy, you help others, you are useful to others, you love and you are loved by others. So there is a lot of positive factors in life, you know, which, which make it worth living, okay. So the line is, life is real, life is earnest and there is a pause in the middle of the line, middle, you know, the first line. But a similar pause is there also in the second line, maybe not at the, not exactly at the end of the third syllable, maybe not exactly at the end of the fourth syllable, it might differ between third and fourth, fourth and fifth, fifth and third, there may be a little difference, you know. That is why language has greater creativity, because there is greater variety. At the same time, there is also, there also is regularity. You see here in the second line, you know, only seven syllables, so you again have a pause after the grave and then a, a, a longer pause at the end of the line, goal. Third line again, a pause after art and a longer pause after eternist. So this is how I mean that patterns repeat themselves, pattern repeats itself in line to line, in unit to unit. And that repetition in a time bound unit gives us the rhythm, okay. There is something else, okay. Maybe we will play the poem once again, come back and play it. Just notice these two things, the length of the line and the pauses in between. Please play. What the heart of the young man said to the psalmist, tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. So it's very clear, barked pause in the middle of the line. May not always be at the end of the third syllable, as I said. Say for example, life is real, it's at the end of the third syllable, okay. But take another line, you know, earlier. Life is but for the soul is dead and things are not, you know, the fourth line of the stanza up and down and things are not, you know, fourth syllable and then you have a pause and comes what the scene, okay. So this there, there may be a little variation of three or four, seven or eight, okay, but the pattern repeats itself and that repetition gives it a rhythm. Come back to the text, please. Okay. Go to the next screen. And then there are some 
some syllables, not necessarily only long words, not necessarily only by, try and polysyllabic words, but words with also one syllable in real life as in a song. Even monosyllabic words can be stressed. Say for example, when you want to emphasize something, when you say go away, so when you say go, you know, you are emphasizing a monosyllabic words. Or when your friend is there at the door and says, may I come in? And you say, oh, come on in, come on in. So you emphasize on. You know, on is a monosyllabic preposition, ordinarily not even stressed. So, you know, any word and any part of a word can be stressed. But which part of a long word is stressed is fixed in English. Okay. But you know, there all there, there, there always are exceptions. Look at the word here. Now, in the first part of the line, not enjoyment and not sorrow, you know, he says that we are not meant only to enjoy ourselves, and neither are we meant only to grieve, only to feel sorry, okay. And neither sorrow nor joy is the only is our only destiny or only way, you know. There are other things. So while saying these other things, you know, there's a contrast and not enjoyment, pause and not sorrow. Now within this pause group, which is the most prominent stress? So for example, not. We have done it in other stanzas and you will see, you will do them yourselves as you hear, you know. So not enjoyment, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed. And then you have other, in the next part of the line, you have two unstressed and not sorrow. So and is unstressed, not sorrow. So is stressed. You hear it prominent. If you close your eyes, you know, and listen to that audio recording once again, some sounds hit you longer and louder and stay with you longer and louder than other sounds. Those are the stressed sounds. Those are the stressed syllables. So for example, here in the next line, is our destined end or way. So, you know, end and way are stressed syllables, but not or. In the word destined, des is the stressed syllable, not tend. Okay. So, in the next line, but to act, maybe but is also stressed, but act is definitely stressed. And then each tomorrow, so in a word like tomorrow, to is hardly heard, you know. Nobody says tomorrow. We don't say tomorrow. We say tomorrow. Today, you know. So day is stressed. In tomorrow, mo is stressed. So these things, this alternating pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables, a few unstressed followed by stressed, and a stressed followed by a few unstressed syllables, they make the pattern. That's why, you know, you can sing not enjoyment and not sorrow. Is our destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow finds us farther than today. Okay, so it goes in a regular, regular beat rhythm. Go to the next stanza. This pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables coming and repeating in a pattern one after another, you know, and in a, in a certain length of time, you know, that is important. How many in how long? At what level? You know, which unit? How many? And then, you know, how long? These three how questions. What or how many? What, how many, and then how long? They make, their answers make the rhythm. So, for example, you know, look at the other stanzas and listen to the poem once again. And Mark stresses on this poem, you know, we have done some work for you. Go to the next. Go to the next. And we have done some work for you. You can check with them. But please, as I have been saying, do your own work first. Even if you make a mistake, even if, you know, you find it's not perfect, do it the first, you know. Please come back to the earlier screen earlier okay take any screen take any any slide 
take any stanza of this poem and any other poem try and read them aloud or listen to their audio recording and as you listen mark stresses for example here in the first stanza which word is stressed which syllable is stressed in a word like footprints which syllable is stressed or in a word like perhaps or in a word like another so you know in the first it is foot footprints but in the next in perhaps it is haps that is stressed in another it is no that is stressed so you know once you do these things you may not get them right all the time but that is why you know you should check with the dictionary or with the answers that we have given and once you know after you have done it two or three times you will find that you do it correctly every time you know your mind will reprogram itself reset itself the way it ought to and as you listen and as you see the poem you will stress them correctly that is the power of mind its auto learning power is so great so you know do this with some patience two three four stanza stanzas if you are tired don't do everything the same day in that case take time but it is by doing them in this manner that you can acquire the proper authentic rhythm of english okay go to the next next you know we have given you the answers you can check but please as i told you do your work first and then check you can also do some extra work you know none of us learns unless we ventures out imagine all of us has had stayed in our mother's laps would we learn walking would we learn swimming running playing singing eating surviving okay we won't it's the same thing here you know so i've given you some additional work uh maybe with another poem equally popular maybe or you know slightly less go to the next okay some of these these, these poems are you know the treasures of the english language okay you will enjoy doing them you can look also go to the you know, go to internet and look at their video recordings see the dance see the song and you can have fun and you can also learn and as you learn mark stresses mark pause groups and get the rhythm right and you will find that next time you speak then if in ordinary conversation with you will be in a rhythm thank you very much enjoy yourselves